Yeah, question. Hmm. You think when, uh, and maybe this is a question for you guys out there too, if you want to join in on this. Do you think when Dustin talks to the ladies, uh, he says, are you ready for the dream boy? No, but I think he says, I've really wanted to talk to you for a long time. I've been waiting to say this since I met you an hour ago. Yes. And like, I've waited for to say this my whole entire life. Huh. Very yeah, interesting. And then uh, he's all out of focus and talks for like 20, 30 minutes. That's our goal. You know, yes. Yes. You know what? One thing he does do, though, was that he's always had his camera show the right angle. Never was mirrored. That's true. As far as I know. He needs a new camera, but yes. And that's a different story, but. That's our boy Dustin, who is starting off this Q&A, as a matter of fact. The first question is, if you guys ever got the chance to interview Vince McMahon, what would be the most important questions you would ask him? I'd probably ask him if there's a concerned effort to try and keep up with the times. Because there clearly isn't, but I'd want to see what his answer would be. I'd like to ask him the question of, is he content with where he's at? If not so, who does he feel is or are the enemies or competition and what is his plan to overcome that i'd like to ask him about the uh sensibilities of continuing to try and pursue the wwe network um there's a lot of things that i would pursue that i would ask him why fans have to be called the wwe universe why we can't be just called the wwe fans why uh or how far in advance they're plotting out storylines and stuff yeah. and there's all types of and not all of them necessarily from an insulting way either. I mean, there'd be some questions from a historical standpoint I'd like to ask him. You know, what do you think, what would you view as some of your greatest accomplishments? And, you know, all types of questions. I'd love to have a, did you ever dream that WWE would get so big? Yeah, there's all types of questions I would love to ask Vince McMahon. And not necessarily from a confrontational or negative standpoint either. I think it would be a tremendous interview and... You know, it would be something that would definitely be on my bucket list of interviews I would like to do in my lifetime would be yes. Dustin K. McMahon. Um, and the other question from Dream Boy is, what are three things you guys love most about being a part of the YWC? Three things. Um, I've made some really good friends on here. Uh, I kind of enjoy... I kind of enjoy having the pulpit to be able to say things. No, I know, imagine that. I enjoy discussion, debate. I enjoy trying to get my viewpoint across. Um, it yes. also reinvigorates us sometimes when we're like, I don't really want to watch Raw. And it's like, yeah, but I guess we could do have fun with the review. There are things to enjoy about it. There are things not to enjoy about it. But we have things that we enjoy about it, no question. At Matt and... Matt Prod, uh, Matt and Matt Prod, excuse me. Was Mick Foley's match at WrestleMania 22 a great send off, or should he have another match at a future WrestleMania? I don't think he should have another match at a future WrestleMania. I mean, I was a proponent before of him working a program with Dolph Ziggler that culminated with the big match at a SummerSlam, or preferably a WrestleMania, to give Dolph a big signature victory. Uh, but if he never had another Mania match, was that match of 22 a great send-off? Yes, I think it was. So either way, I'd be fine. At Andy Irvin 13 do any members of OTRS have kids? Oh, yes, yes, they do. One. The question is, who has the most kids out of everybody involved with Off the Road Show? That's the question you should ask yourself. Don't even answer. It's probably not. No. No. I don't think it's Mark. God knows how many he has on there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a great thing. He makes them, and then, you know, it's not up to him to take care of them. I think that's a respectable thing to say. No. Uh, if you could have one wrestler return to the WWE, who would it be? It's kind of a vague question. Um, Rob Van Dam, because I know it would annoy the piss out of Triple T. I could go with the easy answer here and say the guy you hate, but... If he was healthy, Edge. How about John Morrison? There would aggravate Tony tremendously. He'll be back eventually anyway. Ah. <laughs> Edge is one that he's not coming back, so. You would hope him to be coming back. Um, at Nathan GT 1997, who should Mama June, Honey Boo Boo, and Brad Maddox face at WrestleMania 29? The Ooh. back door. Whoever they would like. Back door. 
It's because they can't get in. If they want to have a backlot brawl, they'll win. Maddox so will come in, but the rest can stay outside. No, Maddox comes with them. He would understand. They can he knows. sit in the stands with everybody else. What if Brad Maddox him. came up to you and said that Mama June and Honey Boo Boo have the Maddox? Yeah, exactly. But There's nothing to say. Shit. He said, he said he had nothing to say. He's smoking the old Mike Chioda. <laughs> smoking that Mike Chioda, eh? <laughs> At Andrew underscore Bucksbury. Remember when we said that? We got... People got very upset because we had made fun of Canadian accents. Come on, think about how many different types of American accents there are you can make fun of. Y'all. Yeah, what's this? <laughs> oh, don't you know there? That's more Minnesota, North Dakota. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Boston accents. Have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got that in the Midwest. Uh, the South. Yeah, I mean, there's all types it's of... Wicked piss, eh? Wicked piss, eh? <laughs> it's wicked hat cook. At Andrew underscore Buxbury. Uh What's better, in your opinion, WrestleMania or Super Bowl? Um, I think we've already answered that. We might have, but if we did already answer it, uh, we'll answer it again. I think it's Super Bowl. I think it is WrestleMania, mainly because I'm not a sports guy. So. Unless it was Jose Canseco. That would be a different story. But I don't think I'd want to see him play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Well, maybe you would. It's the steroid bowl. Everybody has to have at least three liters of steroids in their system. At Simply Bar 340, as far as match quality, what was better, Edge and Taker at SummerSlam or Edge and Taker at Mania in 2008? Uh, I'll take probably match quality. I guess I would say maybe... Uh, that's hard to say. I can't remember if this one was answered before or not. Um, but pick one. Mania or SummerSlam? SummerSlam. I'll take Mania then. Uh, do you think it's fair that some fans still hold a grudge against HBK for his backstage antics earlier in his career? No, I don't think it's unreasonable. It's part of the person. You gotta own up to your past. You think it's fair, though, that people still hold a grudge against him for that? I think it's a little unfair in the fact that... Uh, He's changed and grown up and whatever. Even though there are still examples of in his later career where he didn't always fully grow up, he still had those diva moments. Uh, you know, it's like your past is your past, and how long can you continue to be damned to your past? And the funny thing is a lot of the people that really hold that type of stuff against Shawn Michaels are people that like Bret Hart fans, and Bret Hart was, you know, he wasn't the type of, personality that ADHBK was, but Brett was a very big mark for himself, and he played politics and this and that, so, you know, you gotta keep that in mind, and too, which is for me as a Hogan fan, you know, how much can I knock HBK when Hogan did a lot of this shit, and then to different level. And when you get to that level, you kind of have to have an attitude or an ego, because otherwise you're not going to maintain that level. Yeah, you gotta protect yourself a little bit, no doubt about that. At Peter Kuzmenko, who should the New Orleans Saints draft? Well, since they're switching to a 3-4 defense, you would assume defense would be the name of the game, especially in round one. They don't have the second round pick because of uh, Bounty Gate. Uh, I still think that offensive line is a big need for them, especially the tackles. You've got to be able to protect Drew Brees better than you did last year. I would expect, though, with them switching to a 3-4, their first round pick will probably be some type of 3-4 outside linebacker, maybe somebody like uh, Barcavius Mingo from LSU, maybe Jarvis Jones from Georgia, somebody along those lines. At Clutch Shooter 10, will Drew McIntyre ever get a push to the main event? He floated in limbo for so long, now he's part of 3MB, and I mean, how much sticking power does that really have? Because it doesn't even get featured on Raw anymore. Yeah, I mean, will he ever get a push to the main event? You know, well, let's, let's get him to the mid guard first. Yeah. Do you think that Sheamus and or Ryback will make a heel turn in the near future? Sheamus, I think they're already planting the seeds of. It might be. And Ryback, I don't I don't think so. They need another big baby face. The easy thing to do is when in doubt, heal them out, but sometimes that's not always the right way to go. At MC underscore Big Bird, do you like PWG, Pro Wrestling Gorilla? To be honest with you, I don't I don't watch much of the independents, so a lot of them I just ambivalent about one way or another, could care less. It could be a great product. I assume it must must be. A lot of people seem to like it on the internet. I just don't have time to watch it, don't care to watch it. Uh, at Brad Tragic K, what do you think about Corey Graves and NXT? I think he would a great 
be a great fit to be a lackey to Punk, maybe. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'll be real. He looks like another guy is like maybe what? 5'11", 6 foot, maybe, I don't know his exact height, but he's like 208, 210 pounds. So another guy that's maybe, you know, another guy that's nothing special physically in the ring. Just another average guy in the ring. Right. I mean, some people seem to really like him. Other than that, I really haven't formed much of an opinion on him. Just from a look standpoint, from what I've seen, eh, from, from the gimmick they had him working at under in NXT, eh, but... Does that mean he's not a talent? No, I have to watch more of him. At Danny Crew, what's the maximum number of guys who should hold the WWE title in one calendar? Four. It makes it more important if it's not every week somebody new has the belt. I would say four to six, depending on sometimes maybe, you know, knowing how the WWE's history is, usually they like to have long reigning baby face, short term transitional here, long, re long reigning baby face. Four to six at the very most, if even that. It'd be ideal if it was only one or two, but, you know, some years maybe you can get away with that, some years maybe you can't. At Highbury Fan 88 do you think the Undertaker streak is less relevant due to the superstars on the roster today? No. Because look at who he wrestled at the last four WrestleManias. Let's just look at that. I mean, the last four WrestleManias, he beat Triple H twice. Before that, he beat Shawn Michaels twice. Before that, he beat Edge before that, he beat Batista. Before that, he beat Mark Henry. Before that, he beat Randy Orton. Before that, he beat Kane. I mean, those are some, most of them are pretty big names, you know, world champions, et cetera, et cetera. I don't see Cena's name on that list, though. So. Not yet. So there's a superstar still waiting that hasn't fought Taker. Yeah. I mean, in, and you can argue CM Punk, huh? but how Especially high up on the card is. Punk, really. But, you know, it's saying it's less relevant because of the roster. No, because especially when you look at who he's beaten in recent years, it matters a whole lot more. At Mr. D. Archer, if you were building a sport entertainer, who would be your, what would be your prototype of a sports entertainer? If I, if I was looking at it from a five-tool standpoint and just saying, give me the individual that closely resembles that, it would be The Rock. Um, if I was going to break it down into bits and pieces, uh, Mike's skills would probably be the Roddy Piper, Jake Roberts. Um, charisma would be Hogan. Athleticism would probably be based off of that size, The Rock. Um, see, I'd go with uh, Mick Foley for either my Mike or my charisma. I could see Mike, but that's, he brought a lot of versatility to the mic. Um, the ability to take a pounding, I will say, you know, Mick Foley. Yes, definitely. Presence, I would say Taker. There are a lot of different things, but that gives you some ideas at least. At Jeff43981, who do you hate more, Schlegetti, Jay Cutler, or Jeff Jarrett? I can answer that. Hmm. Jeff Jarrett, I don't hear you rant nearly as much about Jay Cutler. Plus, you get a break from Cutler. I've had a long break from Jarrett, too. Depends. It's a really good question, actually. Um, like, if you had a Mount Rushmore of people that Schleg Daddy has shit on and hated on over the years, it would go your... Quick waste their time making that. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, if you had four faces you put on there, just for some of you that don't know, it'd be Peyton Manning. Um, it would be Alex Rodriguez. It would be Rex Grossman. And it would probably be Dwight Howard. Kevin Garnett got bumped off the mountain and replaced by Dwight Howard, who's a big raging piece of shit. Uh, if I was to put one of those two on there, though, one in doubt, I'm going to go with uh, the guy who fucks up my bears. So Cutler would be the fifth face on the mountain, not Jarrett, believe it or not. Uh, at Volpa Milk, does WWE avoid hardcore wrestling cities because they know their golden boy Cena will get booed out of the building? No. They, 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 they go there. Philadelphia, New York, you you can't really just say, we're not going to go here. Well, and even if they did, they'll... And they'll just go back on the DVD and they'll <laughs> dub over the booze anyways with cheers. Yeah. The booze will go, boo yay, see ya. <laughs> so, That's how we say it in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to go away from big media markets just because they're more hardcore wrestling cities because they, they still want to lure them suckers in and make their money. Remember, continue to tweet your questions to us. Our Twitter handle is at Off The Rope Show. We'll see you next time. Peace.